We love you! Hello and welcome to Tribe Talk, the Galway Hurling Podcast, with me, Patrick Early, and David Connors, where each week we'll discuss and divulge all the goings on in Galway Hurling. We'll be taking an in-depth look at the club scene and of course focusing on Intercounty. In this, Shane O'Neill's first year at the helm, all of which we'll do in the company of some special guests and former Galway greats. So do come along and join us on Tribe Talk, Galway's dedicated hurling podcast. It's county final weekend in, in Galway and not, not something a few months ago we, we mightn't have predicted it happening at all, but it's here. It's happening on Sunday in Athenry at 2 o'clock and we've got a heavyweight meeting between uh, St. Thomas's and Turlock Moore to look forward to. Um, as usual this week, joined by David and Chunky and this week we have a, a new panellist on board. We have uh, Angus Callan joining us this week. Angus, thanks a million for coming on. Great to have you. No oh, bother, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Lads, you keep them well. Still alive, anyway. All good, all good this side. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, um, look at it, Angus. I suppose not the not the year you were you were hoping for, far from a mellow's point of view. You'd have, you'd have liked to be preparing for a county final this weekend yourself, but didn't didn't work out that way for you this year, sadly. Yeah, it's just unfortunate the way things things worked out. You know, just shows the the competitiveness of the championship if you, if you turn up for. And you're not prepared on any given day, you know, teams can turn you over. And unfortunately, that, that's what happened to us. We, we came into the game, you know, thought we were right, but it turned out in the day that, you know, Lockray were, were a much better side, more superior. And, and you know, we, we didn't really get going at all. It was, it was a very disappointing exit to, to, to our championship this year. I, I suppose, Angus, like after, you know, four years on the road as well, did like the tiredness kind of catch up with you eventually or, you know, it's hard to be, you're, you're probably the most consistent team in Galway up until that point and then just, I suppose, everybody has a bad day at the office eventually. Yeah, you know, I, I'd say it was, it was up there, one of our worst performances uh, since since Louis took over. Um, you know, we, we up to that game, we'd only been beaten by, by Turlock and Thomas's in the last uh, three years, you know, um, and, and we sort of made a, a point of point of being as consistent as possible, and for whatever reason, you know, it's, uh, it could be tiredness. It could have been, you know, the, the long the long seasons or whatever the last couple of years. But at the end of the day, it's hard to put your finger on it. We, we were beaten by a much better side, and you know, we're gone, and that's it. We just have to lick our wounds and try and regroup. That's that's all you can do. Yeah, he had three unbelievable years, I suppose, up until that point. Though it must have been. You know, it was quite a journey for you, really, considering where you kind of came from before Louis came in, and then to make three county finals in a row was just—it's a fair achievement in its own right. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, it's it's a significantly different last three years from the previous sixteen before that. So for myself, anyway, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, just just what Louis has done in terms of of the consistency and the spirit that he has brought to the side. It's um, you know it's brought us on on a, on a real journey. You know it's something that a lot of lads wouldn't have experienced um, up to that. But um, you know at the end of the day, you don't turn up, you're gone, and that's what happens. Yeah, you, you're you're all for him this year. You must have been pleased. I, I know the Lockray game didn't go your way or whatever, but you must have been. You kind of went through a mini mini renaissance, shall we say? I know I texted you at the start of the year and. Uh, I, 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 somebody, some little birdie managed to tell me that you, yeah, you'd caught it today, but uh, it turns out it was far from it. And you put in some of your best performances, maybe over the last couple of years, anyway. To, you know what I mean? This year. Yeah, I think maybe the structure of the championship might might have suited me a small bit. I, I think you texted me after I, I went. I missed the first two training sessions, and obviously, uh, words yeah. started going around. But uh, yeah. no, the lads welcomed me back anyway, and. Um, I, you know, I think a lot of it is, is credit to Louis. You know, at my age now, I couldn't be doing the running and hard slogging that lads are doing. So he was very accommodating in terms of, you know, stepping out of hard running sessions or, or you know, if there was a day I needed to, to take a break or whatever, he, he was he was very accommodating. So, uh, but look, it, you know, my performances don't just come from, from my own. It's, it's it's team effort. You know, lads were playing in good ball, create space, etc. So, you know, it's it's a combination of everything, really. 
Just John Louis, has he kind of had he did he give you any indication as to what his plans are for the next year? I suppose it's a bit early yet, like possibly. no, no, he's a man who keeps his cards very close to his chest, you know. Mm. I mean, he, he was gone at the end of every season, you know. We every every <laughs> December we we heard rumors he was going to Cappy and he was going to Offaly, and he was, you know, I, I, he, I honestly, he's his own man, he'll make his own decision, but you know, he, he could have quite easily walked away, particularly after. 2018, you know, after that final, we had just won one, got to another one. People would have said, hmm. you know, he, he, he's done his bit. But in fairness, you know, he, he stuck with us and, and brought us back to another final again, which, you know, unfortunately didn't go our way. But and, and again, then uh, and stayed with us again. And I know he had definite, you know, offers from from inter county teams and other club teams around the place. But hmm. you know, he he. They gave him a car parking space up at the club, and I think that's uh, swung his way. They gave him the space next to the clubhouse, so he, he managed to come back every season. Then, Mighty, just just from a player's point of view, it must have been a, a brilliant championship to play in this year. You know, good hard ground, playing in decent enough weather. Um, you know, the pitch was looking good, Nick, every day. And I suppose with a break as well, the hunger was probably never, never as, never as much. We'll say, you know, you probably were never as mad to get back in the field after the the extended break from COVID. Absolutely, it was it was a joy, really. You know, um, very very different. Uh, you know, with, with the match day setups and the no crowds and stuff like that. But certainly on the field, um, it, it was great. You know, you have dry sod, fastball, uh, and um, games coming. You know, every fortnight. So it was it was very enjoyable. You, you know, you knew what was coming up. It wasn't a case of oh, if the county team win next weekend, now you're, you're not going to be playing for three weeks or any of that. So you were able to plan accordingly, and and it was. Much better for the players, I think, than any other seasons. They they all, particularly, I'd say some of the older lads. Anyway, it was less training and more, more games. That's for sure. That's for, I suppose the the change of structure probably helped as well. Cutting the groups from six to four. I know you were in the the group of death. Which shall we say? It, you know, you might be too thankful for. But but from that point of view, it made every day you went out, particularly after losing the first game. It meant you were in not that oh, nearly from yeah, the away. Every game, every game after the first game, certainly. You know, we were very disappointed with the first game. We 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 thought we 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 were came very close and a couple of decisions near the end. So after that, we were on the back foot straight away. We we had had to win every game from there on, and um, you know that 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 put its own pressure, but also brought a bit of enjoyment and a challenge to it as well. Yeah, is it would it would it be a structure you kind of like to see going forward? Would you prefer the groups of four than six from a player's point of view, or? How do you feel? How do you feel about it? Would you prefer to go back to the six and less cutthroat, maybe a small bit less cutthroat? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, it, it's personally, you know, you don't want the season too long either. And if they're going to stick with this format where you have a defined club season, you know, I think players would want want to just you know run it off and, and not have too many. You see, if you have the bigger groups, you end up with with non games. You know, hmm. invariably after the first one or two games, you know, the top two are kind of sorted out. So. Um, it, it stops that. It, it makes the games much more competitive. That's for sure. That's, yeah. yeah. And Chunky, you were, you were kind of of the vintage, I suppose, the last number of years as well, when the championship structure changed in, in 2016 to the senior A, senior B. We had the groups of six. So from then on, I suppose, it, you, all your final championship years, they were all the, the two games in April and then waiting to see, see how Galway yeah. got on. So I'd say probably this year's structure certainly something you you would have liked to have seen in the last couple yeah, of years. Definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah, uh, definitely. And the one thing I'd say is, Aang has touched on it there, you're, you're every second week or whatever, but the, the biggest thing for me, and I, I went back playing rugby actually the last couple of years on Port Sunland, only a bit of junior rugby, a bit of crack. But the one thing about us, I was able to say in, let's say, September, October, that we were playing on the 3rd of March. Mm. But I knew when it was on, I knew when we were training. I just found with the hurling, like you played the two games in April, but you didn't have a clue when you were playing again. Like, and it was just so frustrating. You had younger lads, older lads, ah, lads want to go on holidays, and just a lot of argy bargy. I found and it was kind of give us the fixtures. If I knew when the fixtures were on, at least you had something to work to. So this year was brilliant. You knew every second week was hurling, you knew when you were playing, it was not as Inga said there. It's not going to them pretty much straight away after the first game. So that, that's what lads want. You know, they want to know when they're playing and the want is probably shortened. Yeah. And definitely the problem the last couple of years was that there was too much training and, and not enough games, even though you're playing groups of six, but still 
you were saying you do a full pre-season in January, February, March, and you play two games in April, and then you might take a month off because it's simply not sustainable, and then and, you're starting almost from scratch again. And, come June, and the, other, July time. the only other point I make is like, so, some clubs, it's just, just not financially, you just you can't sustain it. Like, you know, you're up against some of the top clubs, some of the senior B teams, you just won't have the finances to be paying trainers to do a pre season. Then you have your hurling coach, your fitness coach, you know, you have your manager, you know, and then, then you play your two games in April, take a couple of weeks off, and the panic station hits in, and it's another pre season for the August September championship. And yeah. truth be told, not many teams were ever really out in. In, in April, if you lost the first game, nearly went it on and won the second game and stayed in the championship. So that's another thing, you know. Like it, it, it's not really fair on clubs, like you know, financially trying to sustain that kind of outgoing as well. Like, but look, that's just my own view. On it. Yeah, well, the, the talk is that hopefully the, the split season is going to come into effect in Galway, and um, ho- hopefully next year. I think that's something we'd, we'd all welcome anyhow for sure. But, um, like this year's championship, I suppose, started back the the end of July, and it was kind of a case of going into the unknown in many respects, you know. And even up to a month before that, we didn't really know what was happening, you know, whether we'd be back hurling or not. So, I think when it started up, it was great just to be back, um, and the the kind of the expectations weren't really there for part of the championship, you know, as to how it would pan out or how the new structure would work or anything. But Angus, it turned out to be an absolute a cracker of a championship, which was down uh, partly down to the structure, but I think. The week on week, week on week, and um, structure over as well made an awful difference to it. Yeah, and I think it, it you know, the streaming of the games as well sparked mm. a lot of public interest. You know, um, most people, you know, Saturday or Sunday, there it's much handier to pull out the phone and, and watch the match rather than having to trick out at and Rye or Benesloe or wherever. You know, um, and it, it sort of brought more more people the game to more people. If you know what I mean, that that was much more talk about it then and, and people could see the quality of the games rather than just the people who were at the at the stadium, you know? Yeah, I mean, in a, in a normal season, if we if we were playing the county final in the first weekend of October, we'd, we'd have considered a very good year in, in comparison to uh, having them in November and December compared to other years. But uh, the whole thing has been run, run off in, what, just, just over three months now. And uh, we're, le- we're left, started with 24, we're left with two, St. Thomas's and, and, and Turlock Moore meeting meeting on Sunday. But just before we touch on that, we'll um we'll have a quick look back at how St Thomas has got, got uh, took their place in, in the decider, beating Cap Tagel last weekend, one one fifteen to seventeen points. A cracking semi final has to be said. Re- really, really entertaining, really enjoyable. Um the two hundred strong crowd in attendance certainly had a made a real kind of championship fair, you know, it was really full blooded and plenty of sore bodies I I, I I'm sure this week. But um at the end of it all, I suppose, chunky heartbreak for Cappy. And um, yet again, fourth year in a row, third year they've been beaten by a pint. Not not easy to take that. Ah, oh, jeez, no. Like, to be fair, and oh, like, was there an awful lot more they could have done? I'm not sure. They seem to nearly max out themselves year on, year out. Like, and you'd have to feel for them, like, but you're coming up against champions, and that's what champions do, like, to stay in the game. I think it was a me, it's, it's the third quarter was the, the biggest turning point for me there. I think the Cappy might have been two points up and maybe one, but I, I just there was a swing there about two or three minutes where Thomas has got a couple of points and like they just killed off. They were able to stay ahead then, like, and I uh, just but back to Cappy, like four years in a row, was it three of them they lost by a point, like. Just, just to be able to come back and, and produce the younger players and still come back and back and they'll be back again next year and like geez, it's just it's, it's heartbreaking for them to be honest you know but yeah, that's the way it goes the thing is with, with losing games like that you know the more often you do it I suppose the bigger the hurdle then becomes for you next year you know and Angus, I know you, you were you were the one that inflicted a couple of those defeats or three of those defeats on Cappy, you know. So you know firsthand exactly what they're capable of and just how how difficult it is to to pick up that win over them. But I suppose the last day it wasn't like they really a winning position. You know, they were they were they trailed for a lot of the second half, but certainly a couple of mistakes late on. The ball being dropped out for sixty five and a couple of wides and even. You you mentioned on the phone yesterday the the, the twenty one that 
James Cahill ended up taking this was to be the indecision as to whether they were going to go for it or just tap over their point that that it took up maybe 90 seconds or uh, of time and that proved costly in the end yeah I, I think you, you know I think they'll be very disappointed Capitagal yeah um I think that they they had chances there. They they know themselves. You know, it's it's not it's not one incident. It was just a combination of all little errors or mistakes or you know chances that went awry, particularly in that last ten minutes. You know, the, as you mentioned, the the, the twenty one. You know, the, the, there was a sharp out. There was sixty five. There was uh, a long range free that was driven wide. You know, obviously. Sideline. I don't know if the ref told him it had to go dead or whatever, but you know, it, yeah. it's, it's a fifty-fifty. You should, you, should, you know, try try and play it short and, and make the referee have a call then to win a free or whatever. Make it make it a bit easier on yourself. So you know, I, I think they'd be extremely disappointed because they really did put it up to them. And and like if if you looked at the game overall, you'd say, particularly in the first half, the Cappy completely dominated, bar the one or two small periods. And Chunky mentioned. The third quarter, right, you know, Thomas has took over. But in general, you'd say that Capitagal dominated the game. But yes, yeah. you know, all Thomas's big players ratcheted it up. And in that crucial period, you know, David Burke, Dara Burke, Connor Cooney, all chipped in with vital, vital scores and hooks and tackles and, and you know, really turned the game in their favour in that third quarter. Yeah, definitely. And the like, you know, the definitely you're right in saying that if you look at the game as a whole, Capitagal were the better team for longer periods of the game than Thomas's. Just when Thomas's were on top, they made the, the, the they made it count. And as you uh, as you said, that the, those those fellas really stood up. And David Work in particular, I thought when he switched from from midfield to wing forward, it really really came into the game. But um, David, we we, we were both that as well. And like we've seen Cappy this year, and probably hasn't been certainly hasn't been their best year, probably the worst year, the worst form they were taking into the game over the last three or four years, but they put all that behind them in fairness and this was by far and away the best the best they've played all year. Yeah, and one of their best performances over the last four years, I'd say as well, yeah, just yeah. Uh, like, because Angus touched on it there, they were, they were better than Thomas's for the majority of the game, but I don't think there's any question, just the level of intensity that they brought to the game, like, you know, every, every position Thomas has got, they were hassled and harried and, you know, I, I suppose, they finally started a bit slowly and when they, you know, they left Finch and Burke free back there and he was just mopping up ball initially. But when they actually, after the first water break and in a Burke's goal, they, they switched up to kind of a, an orthodox 15 and they just win Mano a Mano, we'll say. And uh, from that point on, they, they, they just bashed Thomas's up until the third quarter. And I think, was it by the 33rd minute, they, in the start of the second half, they had, they, they'd gone out to a three-point lead. Um, yeah. And it looked like, you know, and what they'd held Thomas as to what, 1 5 from 1 5 mm-hmm. and half time as one well. Five, yeah. it's, it's a serious achievement considering what Thomas has had been, rec- like, had been wrecking up so far this year. Some of the score lines they were, you know, accumulating were just something else. But just, I, I think technically, Cappy got things spot on. And like Chunky said earlier on, I really don't know if they could have done much more. You know, they, I think they absolutely maxed, maxed their potential there um, on Sunday. Um, and it just, it's, it's, it just wasn't good. And, you know, it wasn't enough to get them over the line. Um, it's fierce disappointment for them. Like, there was a lot of bodies out there, you know what I mean? Like, for a finish, like, to, like you feel for Dan Nevin. Like, you, you couldn't blame him because his own performance was, you know, fanta- like, he had a fine game in midfield there for the majority of the game. Like, so, you know. To be, to be fair to Dan Nevin, now, lads, Liam Gordon, who I thought had a brilliant game, right? Just just before half time, didn't Thomas take a quick line ball across the centre of the field and he blew it up? Yeah. Do yeah. you know? So, like, if he took a short ball and tried and win a free and he blew it up again, you'd be roaring at Dan Nevin. He had mm. scored one. I don't know. He's probably a little more than 50 50 as well. He's probably nearly 70 30 at them. Like, they, just from, from talking to lads, like, they, they kind of fancied themselves to get it. Like, well, it was a tricky yeah. situation to be in now. Just two other things. He were at it, right? Hmm. The scale incident to me, you're a hundred percent right. I looked at that back for the the twenty one. I think it was like sixty minutes, fifty five seconds gone. And by the time the goalie poked it out, there was sixty two minutes and like fifty seconds. So it was yeah. very close to two minutes, and that was that was too crazy, like to me, like hmm. get the ball, put it over the bar. There was only there wasn't even sixty one minutes gone, like that. 
it was it was oh jeez, I couldn't believe it. Like when I watched it back, I was saying, "What are you doing? Will you hit it over the bar? You've loads. Of, you're yeah, probably yeah. get another three chances." Like I just thought that was that was criminal. And the last thing I'll say, and I, and I wasn't at the game, but I thought Team and Joyce was playing a great game, right? I know I've been talking about, him, I know Joyce or whatever, but just I I, I actually thought it on the thing. It looked to be one of his better games. Now, he might know more, but he organizes everything, and he wasn't playing for the last ten minutes. Was it like? Lads go on about legs and all this. I don't know. I think it's a time where you need you need heads. Like Gene Ang is playing there with, with Lee Mellows and stuff. You need lads that have been around that can take control. I'm not sure I'd have taken him off. I don't think he was injured. I probably would have left him on. That's no. the last point I'm making. And there, was a, there was a bit of confusion as well before he went off. Like with Don Lemelian was convinced he went he was he was coming off the field. Like because he yeah. he made it as far as the gate and he had his helmet off and everything. Like so I really don't know what happened there. And just, just on the sideline, then myself and Patrick were there, and we heard clearly, Liam Gordon said there'll be 30, more, 30 seconds more. Didn't, what, weren't we right concerned that I'm not just imagining things, Patrick, haven't I? Yeah, for the, for the, for the Thomas's one. For the, for the Thomas's, Thomas's one, just before half time, yeah. So that's why, <laughs> right. that's why Thomas's right. were absolutely, you know, raging. Yeah, no, they were, they were gone crack now. And as yeah. I say, I thought Barlow had a great game, to be fair to him now, but mm. like they were gone cracked. I knew there was a reason... Because your man probably would have hit it over the bar and they would have went in level, yeah. like, you know. Mm. But, um, yeah, so I was wondering that. But the, the last one, yeah. I suppose, it, it might have been playing in his head. And ah, he had got one as well. But look, at, if he worse was a free, like, in front of the gold or something, you know, I'm sure I'm sure the lads gave him the go-ahead to take it upon yourself to yeah. take it on. Yeah. But yeah. The, the, the 21 yard free was crazy. That's something you got to learn from, like, Jesus. Yeah. It wasn't even 61 minutes gone there. Like, you know, that, that was I, a case I, of... Alan Dolan needs to take that hit over the bar and ask no questions and get it back out straight away. Yeah. I think, though, like, just, it, I know it's going to follow on, Patrick, but it just shows, you know, how tactically astute Thomas's are. You, you know, you mentioned it there, uh, Chunky, like, Damien Joyce, Daryl Dolan were hugely, hugely effective in that first yeah. half. They seem to be getting on oceans of ball. And you look at the changes they made then. I think they pushed up David Cherry onto Joycey and they might have attacked or... Pick, pick somebody else to pick up Dara Dolan. And, you know, they really shut them two guys down, I felt, in the second half, mm. particularly in that third quarter. And, you know, they don't get the credit for it, really. Thomases are really, really tactically aware and a smart team. Yeah, absolutely. And you could, you could see, when, I suppose, Jaycee started off as kind of a third midfielder slash kind of extra defender, we'll say, when they had the two man inside line, and when they pushed up the third man, we'd say Joyce was meant to be your your your, your kind of your left half forward, your number twelve, but he still played very deep, and he kind of he kind of left. He was on marking John Head, so a young lad, in, inexperienced, and he kind of you could see him at times. He was kind of looking as like, am I going to follow this out past yeah. my own sixty five, or do I hold my line, or what do I do? And in the end, he was kind of doing nothing. He was just in no man's land for a lot of it. Um, so that kind of, a lot of that comes down to your communication with the lad in front of you and trying to get him to help back so you can kind of hold your shape and help the backs behind you. I think that's probably something they improved on definitely in, in the second half. And certainly, I definitely agree with you, Junkie, and say, when you're saying one of Jaycee's better games, I said the best game he played all year. I thought he, he was really, really good. I've, um, seen him play, I've seen him play even against Bertrand over the years. Like, and he mightn't hit a lot of ball. But he just has that. It's nearly like he's managing them from the from mm. the pitch itself. I know it's hard to explain, but he's mm. nearly telling you where he might be getting the ball. But he's like, it's going there. He's pulling lads out. They have a good system, and I, I I'd say he's heavily involved in the system. I don't know, yeah. but it seems to be to me that he is, and he did, they definitely started playing better when they started playing in the last couple of games. Just yeah. just on John Hibbs, like he's he's obviously a young player, but. He was caught in no man's land as well because do you know who was working behind him? In behind him was Jarlett Mannion. So if you leave, <laughs> if you leave a load of space there, you're isolating Keen Mahoney one on one with Jarlett Mannion, who was in you know he was in the far room side. Now in fairness, Keen Mahoney he did grow into it a bit and he won a couple Jeez, of big positions yeah. towards the end. Jeez. Now Mannion was in like Mannion was in unstoppable form for a lot of it. Like you know he's just that when he when he clicks into you know fourth or fifth gear, you're not stopping him. And he just uh, when he on the run he flicked it. I think he finished with four points on play, but. He had a couple of other shots as well, and in fairness, Keen Mahoney, he, he wasn't, I, he wasn't, he wasn't terrible or anything like that. I, 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 I thought he was excellent, and I know that sounds mad. I, if you watch, if you study his game, I'm telling you that Thomas has trusted him. I think three times out of Jam Mannion's points, he got the puck out. 
So it was a great sign of a player. He won a lot of balls off Jaha Mannion in a lot of space. Obviously, Jaha Mannion's a top forward to me. But Key Manny, that's the, I would know nothing about him until the last day. He is a fine player and he got he did a hurt really well the last day. And they'll have no problem him picking up any of the turtle forwards the next day. That's my own view. If you watch the game he played, he was under pressure. The ball was coming in. Beautiful for Jaha Mannion. Got a couple of class points. Jaman won a lot of ball and he finished fierce strong in the last 15 minutes, uh, Manny. Mm. Yeah, he was, yeah, well, very, he was that's good that's enough that's now, lads, to be fair to him. Yeah. Well, that's something we're, we're going to touch on in a way when we're previewing the game is the, the matchups and how, in fairness, like you'd say, on another day, if a corner power takes a corner back for two or three points from play in the, in the first half, you're getting switched straight away. So it shows, as you say, you weren't the only one that saw that he, he was obviously doing a decent job. The, the, the Thomas' management saw it as well and yeah. were happy to leave him on him because they still felt he was the best, best man for the job. And that in itself breeds confidence into a player, like in fairness, you know? Yeah, he was he was excellent. I, I know I, I don't know what I say it before. I remember we played Bally Hale and they had Henry Shefflin and like we kinda knew when they dressed him that Henry Shefflin you always kinda win to one of your weaker players. Like we always trusted our backs. We thought they were brilliant and we kinda told Aidan O'Donnell he's probably going to go on you like. And Donald was kinda looking and said, Why is he going on me? And we're like, We're not saying you're our weakest back, like but there's a good chance of going. But, but in fairness, I'll never forget it. Like it was half time down in Turles and we were in there roaring and shouting, saying we're all fine, like and we looked like you know, lads of Leo Smith was roaring saying, Jesus, there's loads left us. I remember looking over at Donner and he had his hand on his helmet going, Jesus, I'm absolutely fucked. <laughs> but but to be fair to him, your man Mahoney kind of reminded me of Donner the last day, like they trusted him on him, and he did all right. Like, you know, most brilliant forwards in goal would like you know, Joe Cannon, Link Ingus, lads like that. They'll get a lot of scores from play anyway. Like, but yeah, you gotta trust him. Just they trust him now. I have to say, I thought he did well. He finished well. Like, he got he got turned once or twice. But yeah, man, he's gonna turn. The best yeah. of the yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. Just before we just before we finish up, by the award on Thomas is because. You know, we've seen the, the, the free flowing game they can play and the, the massive scores they can rack up. This 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 wasn't that sort of a game, but you show they showed a different kind of a gutsy and a, they weren't they weren't afraid to stake in and t- tear into Capi, that's for sure, you know. So there's a lot more to them than just the, 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 the silky skills, I suppose, that you you'd associate a lot of those players with. They're well able to win a, a, a tough kind of battle like that too, which is it's another great sign of, of a team like yeah, but you're look at look at the look at the players they have. Like they've 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 had workers really all over the field as well. Like you have you have like the Dara Burke in full forward, like and sure you know what I mean, he'll, he'll get a hand or a hurl in on top of everything, then like you, you come out a bit further and like Connor Cody Connor Cody was doing a bit of work back in his own half back line near his own twenty one at times. He picked up a couple of positions there as well. And you know, Davy Burke in midfield, then Shane Cooney, like and you know, even Finton back a bit further. But Finton caught a colossal amount of ball. Like, at the start, Teppy were bombarding high ball in. And he was just gobbling everything up. Like, so, yeah, Thomas is can, in fairness, they can hurt you either way, really. Like, you know what I mean? If you want to, if you want to, if you want to bring it, you know, physically, um, they, they'll go with that. And if you want to try and hurt them as well, they'll, they'll do that. But that's the sign of the, the kind of the best teams. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the same with Port like, or... Afton Rye or Sarsfield, like they could always mix it up as well. Like you won't be, you won't be going for three in a row if, if you're not able to mix it up. And you know, it, it's as simple as that, really. Yeah, I think it's something maybe they don't get enough credit for the, the physicality that they bring and intensity. You know, we noticed it particularly. You know, you'd be tipping along in, in group games, and next thing you come to them in the final, and it's just a completely different ball game. You know, the physicality, the intensity, the work rate they bring. I, I don't think it's it's talked about enough. That, that, you know, they're a mm. savage, savage sight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and with, with that, I suppose we'll we'll move on and we'll we'll look ahead to the game on Sunday because I suppose you're, probably Thomas's Turlock and Mellows were the, the top three and probably everyone's top three at the start of the year. And that's if you're asking somebody who who's going to be in the county final, it was two of those teams, and so so it's turned out with with, with Thomas's and Turlock and. Um, Probably the game a lot of people wanted to see in the final for sure, and you know it was a kind of whether Thurlock could. I'm not sure Ingus wanted that now, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
think you'd but, have preferred uh, a Meadows either <laughs> final. <laughs> well, I, I'd prefer the Bayer final myself as well, but uh, you know, <laughs> real, it would be real, realistic as well, you know. But um, I suppose, the, look, we're, we're, you'd we're, never get that last home from America from again. Go on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we were serious games look ahead to, and probably. You know, we in the semi final last year we thought we had the same thing and it didn't turn out that way. I thought it didn't really show up on the day, but I don't think there's any danger that happened this week and we're we're certainly aiming it's probably in, in for a cracker, it appears. Absolutely. I mean, you know, as you said there, the, the probably the two best performing teams this year. Um it's going to be a very intriguing battle. Uh I, I you know, Turlock will, will certainly have have learned from the semi-final last year and start with a kind of very cagey approach. I think they'll, they'll keep it tight and not let Thomas's go ahead because generally with Thomas's, if they get ahead of you, they usually stay ahead. You know, it's very hard to claw them back. They keep, they keep staying ahead of teams, taking points away. So, you know, I think they need to, they need to not fall behind early and try and get a good start and, and stay ahead of them. Because in, in reality, they have no excuses now, Turlock, you know. Yeah. They have an extra week. They could have easily trained Sunday evening, knowing they were playing Thomas's, you know, trained flat out Tuesday. And Thomas's probably might only get one session in. You know, they'd have to recover and, and probably have a full out session, you know, either tonight or, or Wednesday, you know. So there's no excuses for Turlock. They have to show up. Uh, and if they don't, if it's like last year, you, you saw what happened. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I suppose, Chunky, put the question to you, who, who, whose favourites going into it? Well, it's interesting you ask that, because I was thinking about there only this evening, and I was saying to myself, uh, who do I think is a better team? I, I probably think Thomas's are a stronger team, mm. but whose favourites going in? I have to say, turn up more of a massive advantage to me. I, I, I think the extra week is colossal, like, to be honest. Yeah. In fact, I nearly think I'd nearly go as far to say it's probably a little unfair on St. Thomas's to have to go out and play this game this weekend, six or whatever it is, seven days later, with the fact that Turlock Moore have had an extra week. You know, they're going for three in a row. Tough championship. It's been a great championship. Probably the two best teams. You know, they're both undefeated, I think. So, like, yeah, like, I, I think a lot, a lot, a lot is in Turlock Moore's favour with this extra week. Like I, I was looking closely at a few of the Thomas's lads coming off the last day and was, if you look at it like there was a, definitely at least three of them seemed to be carrying injuries like, you know, the corner fall rushing Flannery. I don't know, did he get injured at the, the first few minutes? He definitely looked to be carrying an injury. One of the cornerbacks, I think it was Skehill and yeah, uh, yeah. a few more lads that seemed, seemed to be limping. Like, and I'm sure they'll be fine. It's county final. Like, but... You know, it's not ideal, lads. Like, you know, you're going out playing Turlock Moore, who are seasoned inter-county players all over the pitch. Like, you need to be seriously ready for that final or you're not going to win it. So I really do hope that Thomas has produced a good performance, you know, because I hate to think that that week, is, like, come back to even Angus there, like, I think it definitely cost them, like, a performance. It, it mightn't have cost them the game, but it cost them a performance that was, that was stuck to their feet after the work game and, just the challenge of being so good. I I, I hope I hope both teams perform and we get a we we'll get a cracker like the championship has been. But I I do think Thomas they're slightly better. But on favourites, I I wouldn't be surprised if Turlock were slight favourites with the freshness going into the game. Yeah, like the the reality is, David. I suppose it's 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 two very different weeks in in, in both those camps this week. In that Turlock had their recovery out of the way and probably. Not physically exerting a game either. Their semi final against Lacre, so they and didn't seem to pick up any knocks out of it. So they were probably all good to go again by Wednesday, Thursday night at the latest, and have been training flat out since, uh, as you say, there Angus. Whereas, and this week now, everything they do is tailored toward Thomas's, and, and obviously they're getting their own performance right as well. Whereas mm. for Thomas's, I think it's just a case of trying to get their first fifteen plus their five best subs all. To, to, to the battlefield in, in, in good nick really you know for for sure and just, just on what Chunky was saying three lads limping I, I was waiting around because I wanted to wanted to have a quick chat with Kevin Lally afterwards just for, for uh, an interview with the paper this week and uh, Thomas's lads were coming up by me and I'd say there was a lot more than three lads that were um, yeah. limping Jeez, there, were, there was a few of them carrying some serious knocks like what seemed to be serious knocks like like for me it looked like uh, Flannery's it seemed to be a hamstring injury like so 
it's yeah. probably just a matter of, like that won't that probably won't clear in a week like his, oh, geez, he heard well oh, after he, he did, he did yeah, but he's, yes. he's having he's having a great year in fairness to him like he's do you know he's not the he's not the biggest him in there but he's he just does a neck kind of winning his own ball but uh yeah no from 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 just from just chatting to Kevin Eddie, he was saying that the plan is I don't think they're even going to like have any kind of you know a serious session this week it's all about recovery and yeah. I, I I think from the, the sounds of things a lot of them were heading into nearly practically straight afterwards they were heading into Damien Comer's place there in Lisbon the Atlantic Wellness or something mm. like so so I'd say a few mm. of them are going to. <laughs> Have a few a, a good stint of the week spent in there, just trying to get the bodies right, and you know yeah. that's that's a, that's a serious challenge in itself because you know Turlock are Turlock are a fierce physical team as well, and they're going to you know they're going to be well interacted into them from the start. Jeez, yeah, Which yeah, but on the flip side too, David, like you know the, the short run on r- running may slightly help Thomas as well. You know, there's no build up, there's no talk of three in a row. You know what I mean? They've no press night. It's literally roll on for the next week, and they, they've played Thomas or Turlock last year. They know what's coming, so it may, on the flip side, help them a small bit as well. Yeah. In, in that the pressure wouldn't be as much, you know. I, I suppose just in just in terms of pressure, I, I suppose with there being in what this is their fifth county final since twenty twelve. I, I, I don't I don't know would it be huge for them either? Would do you imagine it's been massive? Really, I, maybe the talk of three in a row could. I don't. Yeah, but I, 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 I don't I don't think Thomas will be under much pressure. I think all the pressure is on Turlough Moore because Turlough Moore look at themselves and they've they've as I said they've inter county players all over that team and you know they've won a lot of minors under twenty one and I, I think they believe now is the time and they'll there'll be a bit of pressure on Turlough Moore now to to get a performance, especially with the two weeks off. But I, I can't see Thomas have been around as things. You've seen them as well first hand in county finals. They they'll be fine. Like uh, once the injuries are clear, like it was a tough game now to be fair. Capital were hounding like dogs, so they will be sore for a few days, like, but the extra day will help them on Sunday as well. But I hope it does anyway, because as I say, you wouldn't like to think that you know, after the championship a, a team would turn up to the county final and be flat like you know, because mm. We don't yeah, want to see that. It happens, it happens to simply. <laughs> I know, and, and, and to be fair, to be fair, like I would even for for Lee Mello is like you know, to me that was the single handed reason. Like if you're flat, it's it's, it's next to impossible. If you're if Tur- if if St Thomas are flat the next day against Turlock Moore and Turlock Moore go three ahead, Turlock Moore could win the game by five or six points because there'll be no stopping the likes of uh, Sean Loftus and uh, Dahi Burke and these lads, Connor Walsh. Like, there'll be no stopping them because if the feet go dead and the heads go down, it doesn't matter how good you are. You've seen it with uh, Kerr Finn in the football. Just, you can't keep it going. So I, I do hope fans just get a get a performance. But mark my words, if they do get a performance, and like Inga says, and it so works out that the, the week lands their advantage. Well, then they're going to be very, very hard to stop because, to me, they're a serious, serious outfit. Yeah, for sure. And in fairness, you know, Turlock, I suppose, they put the, the ghosts of that semi-final defeat last year, they put them to bed in some respects against Loch the last year. And they certainly, they didn't give off the impression of a team that were kind of not used to this level or, or whatnot. But in saying that, it's still a first county final ever, senior final ever for these lads. And it's not, it's not going to be your typical county final day, you know, it, it, it's in Athenry, which is, which is brilliant, I, I think, anyhow. And um, you're going to have your couple of hundred there, Provided we, don't, I, I don't know. Does if if we go into lockdown on Friday, does does that change things? I don't know. But you know, it's not going to be the same um, experience we say as as previous county kind of finals would be. So maybe that is a bit of a help for, for Turlock. But I'm saying that you know, Thomas's have been there so often before. They're four from four in county finals. They know. I suppose you have that winning mindset in, instilled in them, and you've seen that in. In a lot of their games, in a lot of the tight games where they're they're under pressure coming down the stretch, that comes out in them, and they know how to finish out games, and that's worth an awful lot in 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 a game like this too, Angus. Certainly, you know, um, they're a ruthless team, St Thomas. Uh, you know, it, it's something that uh, you know maybe isn't seen all the time. That uh, you know, they're well mastered at, at doing what it takes to win. Uh, you know, whether it's whether it's by the letter of the law or not, you know, they, they, they always yeah. seem to get over the line, especially in Galway. Um, but you touched on something there, Patrick. You know, it is going to be quite a different county final in that 
the water breaks and the fact that, you know, what we would have done for a water break last year in the second half after 15 minutes, yeah. you know, just mm. to stall and reset. But, you know, it seems to give Thomas a, a kind of a a re reset and a rejolt again because every time there's a water break they seem to push on again straight away you know so it's unusual for a county final to be played in in four quarters because once a team usually gets away from you it's hard to catch them in the county final because the way the games are run you know the, the, the yeah. referees are much more strict they keep the game going nobody's allowed to go down injured you know water medics are sent off so it's it's going to be slightly different i think in that respect yeah, and you you mentioned earlier on, Ingus, at, at the start about Thomas. If they get the lead, they're very they're very hard to to reel in. And in fairness to Turlock Moore, they've they've been the same in their last couple of games. In that, especially after half time against Lockray and Sars, who would say they were both they were pint ahead at half time in both games. And straight after the break, they'd hit three, four, five points without a reply in both games, and put the game to bed there and then. Which you probably you wouldn't have, you you wouldn't have predicted at half time in either game. And although their lead against against Lockeray was kind of between three and six points, we'll say for most of the second half, they never really looked like getting caught either. No, I was just saying about um, Turlock Moore when they when, when they when they take a lead after half time yeah. the, the last two days, um, very very hard to very hard to read back in. And the last two days, neither Lockeray nor Saras was actually looked looked like catching them. In fairness. I I I'd say I'd say that one of the biggest strengths of Turlock Moore is their fitness, like. They look to be in great shape, and the like, the likes of Dahi Burke and even further more at his age, and they're half forward and like Connor Walsh and these lads. The, the, the middle third is very athletic. A half back line there, Hudson, Dan, Dan Loftus, and uh, Jamie Holland. You know, I said it before. They're well, well, Kate. Like, geez, Jamie Holland ended up in the inside the twenty-one at one stage. Dahi Burke won, won the free for the goal, and they're getting up and down the field like you know. Even when I've seen in the last couple of years, so. It's probably one of the reasons why they're finishing so strong. So they won't, you know, to me, if they're down down a couple of points, they won't panic. You know, they shouldn't be panicking because they're well capable of staying in the in the game for the last quarter. And they then finish out the game strong with the especially with the two week break again, like yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I know it was the, the running game that they implement, it's very noticeable now as well in, in the knockout stages this year. In that, you know, when they're full forward in or half hour they win ball, they always have an option coming off the shoulder, uh, coming toward run towards goal, let's say. And as a defender, that's something it's very hard to counteract it if you if you can get it right. If you have a lad coming onto a ball at pace, you know, that's something obviously Thomas is going to uh, going to have to be wary of because they're creating and taking an awful lot of chances and creating goal chances off the back of it, uh, David. Oh, absolutely! Like it's 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 frightening when they the way they go through the lines, and that seems to be as as you mentioned already. It's 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 very evident from their play. Just even throughout the whole year, you mentioned the knockouts there, but you can see it. This is the this is the brand and style that they're trying to implement mm. this year. But one aspect that kind of we haven't really talked about before is their restarts. They're absolutely on the money. Mark Mark uh, Mark Mark Fahey, isn't it? He's the keeper. Yeah. The names, yeah. He's his restarts to to um to sorry. They normally they either hit one of either is it Michael Murphy or or Morris or then you have Loftus or Kevin Hussey and the the, the quality of the ball from them, them four boys in particular is absolutely first class going you know going forward and it's always it's always a, a 70 30 or a 60 40 ball in their favor you know and that's how they're creating so many chances this year that's a, that's a platform that Thomas's will have to kind of put a, a stamp on they really have to you know what I mean they won't be able to let the, those boys come out with the ball because the, those guys can carry it as well you know what I mean and you know give a simple one through between the, the half back and the corner back there they're, 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 they're a serious team and just just in, in, on terms of just what Chunky finished there I would expect them to finish the stronger the two teams like so you know, just just after the two week break, uh, after the two week break and the extra the extra few days rest, it'll be, you know, if if Turlock are still there, you know, pint or two win with ten minutes to go, you'd imagine it'll be they they'll be the team that'll probably you know be expected to drive on from that point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that, that that's worth. And in a game like this too, where you you expect, you know, they're going to be going out and hammer and tongue right from the start. It is going to be very physically exerting, and if Turlock do have an edge. It, it will come in come into effect in kind of the the last quarter as you mentioned there yeah. Dahi Burke is going to have a massive uh, massive role in the whole county final to me as well. Do you know do 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 St Thomas sacrifice one of their midfielders 
you know, to, to, to track him because, like, the truth be told, he proved it last day against Loch Ray that he probably does need to be tracked. Like, you know, he's mm. he's too good a player, like, you know. And I don't think lads even realised until this year in the club championship and all the streaming services how good of an actual intelligent hurler he is out the field. You know, we all saw how brilliant he was at centre-back, full-back at inter-county, but his use of the ball from the forwards and his... His runs and his hand pass and winning the rocks is just phenomenal. Like as I said, Doc Gray tried to target him and they just they weren't able. Simple as that. So that that'll be a big part in the uh, in 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 the talking point anyway for for Thomas. They haven't much time to think about it now, but yeah. they, they'll certainly need to think about it if they want to go win the next Sunday because you know you, as I said, you sacrifice David Burke's game or even James Regan to me who had a fine game. The last day was probably one of his better games. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Just, just, just on Dahi, I suppose he'd be one lad that won't have the extra rest, considering he played, he played the full game for Corrafin at the in the semi final at, at the weekend. So, you know, it, it looked like it was a energy sapping game as well. He was he was busy. I think he, he was cornerback or wingback. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. I didn't see it all, but he'd be one lad. But I suppose it's one lad that's capable <laughs> he's, of. He said that lad's a different animal anyway. He'll uh, be all right. Yeah, one lad that's capable. He, he definitely won't be tired anyway. We we'll, we'll, we'll say that much. Yeah. Yeah, and the. The um, I suppose when you when you when you you look at you look at the team the the probable lineups, David Burke versus Dahi Burke is kind of one that everyone wants to see. But I don't know. I think do, do Thomas has have a decision to make both a in terms of do they track Dahi and do they sacrifice someone as you mentioned there in Chunky. But does David Burke start midfield in the first place? Because it was it was only when he went wing forward the last that I thought he began to he began to wield a, a real influence on the game and. He was crucial in turning the game around for them in, in that third quarter, Angus. Certainly was, yeah. He, you know, he, he wasn't really in the game that much in the first half, or maybe one or two two runs forward. He, he you know, um. So it is, it is going to be a very interesting decision where they place him overall. I, I personally think that they will start in midfield. You know, uh, he's played there for the majority of their games and been very effective in that role. Maybe, you, you know, whatever happened to the last day, Cappy might have had a man tagging him as well. So you mentioned it there, though, there is going to be some very interesting matchups right down the middle. You, you know, you virtually have a county player, American a county player nearly from full back to full back all the way up along. So I think that whoever comes out in them battles is going to go a long way to deciding where it goes. Yeah, we, 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 we've got kind of a few of them here, Mark, here that are you're, you're kind of nine. 99% sure that they're going to work out that way and one that I, I'm looking forward to actually seeing is um, Jamie Holland and, and Conor Cooney because you know Conor Cooney the last day he was um, stuck in the clutches of Ronan Garvey which isn't a very nice place to be uh, <laughs> I can imagine because you don't get anything handy there whereas let's say Jamie Holland brilliant ball player we know he's one, one of the best strikers of a ball in goal but there's probably there's more of a defensive role there, there for him this week as well. In that, you know, you're now tagging one, one of the top top forwards in the county as well. So, be interesting to see how, how that one plays out as well, Angus. Certainly, yeah. And inside there again, like you've you've Ronan Burke maybe on Dara Burke or Aina Burke, you know, and and be very interested to see what what they do when they drop a man because Jamie generally likes to sit back maybe a small bit, you know, yeah. in the pockets. You certainly can't do that with, with Connor Cooney around because Thomas will pick him out and it'd be handy enough scores for, for, for Connor that way. I, 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 I think Thomas I think Thomas will probably change around to be honest. I didn't think it was their, their strongest game the last year. I, I, I could see something like uh, Connor Cooney going straight in on the edge of the square to be honest and maybe Dara Burke starting centre forward. Something like that to maybe ignite them at the start. I, I can see David Burke probably playing midfield, but I can't see him. There's no way they're going to have him picking uh, Dahi Burke because you're going to need David Burke to have his own influence. Like, and you need him to be striking ball. He can't be running up and down the field after Dahi Burke. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I think they'll change it slightly. I, I think they probably need to change it a bit, to be to be honest. Yeah. Another, another interesting one is... Um... At the, the, the other the other forty would say Shane, Shane Cooney and Connor Walsh, two two pretty key playmakers in many respects for, for both sides and two lads that are having brilliant years. Um, so like that that's probably another one again critical to the outcome, really, isn't it? Yeah, just just on that though, Connor Walsh could he could easily play wing forward as well. Maybe you know just in terms of Chunky mentioned about targeting players there and maybe. Targeting the young someone like John Head, where you'd imagine under puckouts in particular, Connor Walsh would have 
would have a, a if they wanted if they chose to go long he'd have a, probably a bit of an advantage there and Loftus would cause you know if he was to drop deep or you know what I mean he might cause a bit of a headache for Shane Cooney but although Shane Cooney likes to drop into the pocket as well um, if they do match up it'll be it'll be a serious battle there um, Walsh is having a fine year and Shane, Shane Cooney was outstanding the last day as well he's He's, he's seriously powerful, like, and just the way he bursts out with the ball and his use of possession is excellent as well. But, uh, yeah, that's a that, that that's a serious, serious battle there. If, if it does come to pass, like, there'll be no quarter given and none, none asked either. Um, one lad we haven't mentioned yet, and he, he wasn't involved in the last at all, was, was Cahill Burke. Um, someone who's obviously been been a, a nailed on starter for a decade or more on, on that Thomas' team. So, I, I'm not sure, is there is there an injury there or what? But, Certainly, if he's fit, I'd, I I could see him coming back into the team from the start this week and may, maybe taking that number five jersey back back off of John Hayden, picking up a Matthew Keating or, or, or one of these lads, you know, because he certainly, his experience and know how on a day like this would be worth a lot for them as well, you know, uh, coming up against these, these Turlock fellas. He picked just, up a couple of points, didn't he, your man, Johnny Hayden, the last year for a finish yeah. now, to be fair he to did, him. He did, he did, he yeah. did, yeah. yeah. And there were a couple of important scores at the time. Like, yeah, like, you know, and the, and the way the way Cap, the way Cap play, like it's not easy on a wing back when you've a lad dropping deep hitting ball, like, and and they show confidence in him, and like, and he he repaid them. He landed two, I think he landed two monster points, like mm. so. Geez, yeah. he'd feel hard done by if they give him the red yeah. card. Yeah, I, I but, don't uh, just just from chatting to lads locally, I I don't I don't think Cahill Burke is going to make it. I think it's I think it'd be highly unlikely. I think he is he's carrying a pretty yeah. pretty a, a knock. So I just. I His think, physicality I think would definitely be a loss. I think they would have, when when the game was under a bit of pressure the last day, if he was anyway right, they probably would have thrown him on, well, yeah. I think. You know, he would have been a bit experienced even for the last 10 or 15 minutes to see it out. Because he was, he was outstanding last year in the entire campaign. He was one of Thomas's best defenders. So I'd say if he was anyway right at all, they, they might have risked him when, when the game was... You know the game was in the melting pot there, but I I think just from chatting to lads, and I, I just I don't think he's I don't think he's likely to feature. Now I, I could be completely wrong on that, but yeah. just that's kind of what my my understanding of the situation is anyway. Yeah, and, um, well, for for Thomas, I suppose the, those couple of injuries that we, we mentioned there, the Sean Scales and Ushin Flannery's both of them clearly struggled for for large periods of the game the last day and did brilliantly to come through as, as well as they did. Like Flannery picked off three points and. Sean Skettle, certainly he wasn't caught out on any occasion that I can recall anyhow, but getting those lads right will be awful important, especially like Flannery, he, he, he's having a brilliant year, and he's actually a lot of your mind. Connor Hines, who, who joined your set up this year, I think they're, they're, they're a similar, play a similar sort of a style, and great lads to get out in front and win, win their own ball, you know, and then obviously when the ball is, ball is in their hand, they're, they're, they're both capable of, uh, of causing serious damage. Yeah, certainly. I mean, um, you mentioned Connor there for us. He, he had a fairly phenomenal first season. You know, when he came yeah. in first, he was he was so small. Lads were afraid, but yeah. you know, he's he's tough as nails and he's a little wizard, really. So you know, there's, yeah. there's definitely a good few years ahead of him. But uh, you mentioned Ushin there. Yeah, you know, he he's been causing trouble for us last year in the county final, and 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 this, you know, he's having a good season so far. So it's vital for them that you know they they really need everybody, as Chunky said, they need all their bodies, because um, as you said there, David, if if they were in trouble, they would have sprung lads, you know, mm. and and, and yeah. they, didn't, they didn't. So I think they need everybody. Yeah. And just on, on Ushin Flannery, like for a lad that's. A prolific enough corner forward. His use of the ball is brilliant. I, I really like the way he, you know, if he's in trouble, he throws it out. If you watch him the last day again, he laid off two or three balls again to players out the field. Like, you know, it's, it's a great sign of a corner forward. And, and young Hines was the same for um, for Mellows. Wins, wins the hard ball in the corner and is able to lay it off, which is which is crucial. Like, you know, some corner forward. <laughs> Go on, yeah. He was on. He was on James Garvey as well for the for the majority of the game, which probably ain't as you know as well. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's not an easy test. There was a, a fair bit of a size difference there, but he managed to win a couple of a couple of balls coming in along the ground, and you know he he didn't look he didn't look overly physically dominated either. Which which we, when you're looking at when you see the two of them standing up side by side, there's a, there's a serious height difference there. Yeah, certainly. You know, James is James is a physical strong man, and. Uh... I think there was even one stage there they commented that he, I think he caught a ball nearly over him. So, you yeah. know, he's, he's certainly not found wanting when, when the, the going gets tough, was she? 
Yeah, for for Turlock as well as the the, the the key forwards for them are probably probably Sean Lennon and Sean Loftus. You know, Lennon is especially you know the both of them, in fairness that the, the day against Sarsfields were were outstanding and probably need to really hit hit the kind of the heights you would have expected in the semi final and it was other fellows that that really carried the fight to lock Ray, Gary Burke and Barry Callan and these fellows that had very good games but there two lads probably Thomas is going to look of maybe tagging and. Is Keen Mahoney probably a fellow you're going to put forward to to, to mark Sean Lennon based on what he did the last day? He's probably he'd be he'd be my pick I'd imagine anyhow, and maybe maybe a David Sherry on, on a Sean Loft or something like that. Um, something they they'd certainly have to look at anyhow, you know. Yeah, I, I think they need to pick up as a Barry Canlon or Brian. I get them mixed up the Barry. whole time. Barry, yeah. like uh, like Stephen talking to the Lock Rayla, they probably took him a small bit for granted. And uh, even they didn't want to say they took him for granted, but like you're saying there, you need to pick up this lad, that lad. He's probably their most natural forward if you look at their forward line. I know it's something people talk about a lot is um, Turlock Moore's natural forward. So to me, I think your man Mahoney will probably pick up Barry Cannon. And, and he'll need to because he, he probably won the game from the last time. He got probably won three. He could have scored three goals. So if he goes in the next day and you give him space... He probably won't miss what he missed the last. I know they went over the bar, but other than that, to me, Thomas, they won't overly worry about. They won't overly be worrying about Turlock more than they pick their lads in their positions and they, they trust themselves. Like you've seen at the last day with your man Manny, like they just trust their players and a great sign of a team as well. Like you know, but if things are going badly wrong. They've no choice but to start. You know, if, what you, what's his name? Lenan started speaking off. Three or four points, they might have to change it for me, but I don't think they'll overly work. They get the bodies right, and they'll go out. They're used to this now, like the four county finals won. They're not going to over panic about Turlock more. They will get their own game right. They've, yeah, they've, absolutely. They've, yeah, they've, well huge, they've huge history these two teams as well, which is kind of you'd forget about it sometimes. I think uh, was it around two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. They 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 did huge classes, minor A finals and under sixteen finals. Uh, I think it was in 2007 that Turlock bet them in under 16 for the under 16 in the under 16 A final and the, the minor final. And I, I think that the, they, they drew the initial 2007 minor final. Uh, I think it was it a 14 year old Dahi Burke that came up and he took a close range free to take it to a replay. And uh, they, it went to uh, it went to a replay and then it went to extra time and Turlock won by a pint. Like there's lads there like say Dahi and. Gary Burke and Ronan Burke and, and there's a few there's plenty of lads there and then from the opposite ends you'd have you'd have James Regan and you know what I mean like all the all the main Thomas's lads there like David Burke James Regan and all these lads that would have been involved Bernard Burke is another one um, they'd, they'd have no love lost them you know them clashes underage as well and they'd be, they'd be fierce familiar with one another so this would be another chance to you know to rekindle an old rivalry there or plenty of it anyway yeah, well, uh, an instance I know, do we, do, do we see Dahi Burke coming up and sticking LA21 LA to, to win it for the Big Seek? I don't, I don't <laughs> well, know. But, uh, on that, it could go, it could go to penalties because it's it's, it's it's match on the uh, result of the day. Like, so, you know, could we could we get our first, you know, county final decided on, on penalties? You know, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be a travesty, really. But, you know, I think they're under fierce pressure for time and there's, there's a heck all in it. Yeah. There's a high probability it'll go to a draw, to be fair. Yeah. I, I agree with Chunky. Like, you yeah. know, if you look at both sides, they're both scoring an average of 23 points a game and they're both conceding an average of 20 points a game. So yeah. they, they're very, very close all season. If you took, unfortunately, Chunky, if you took the Patrona game out of it, they both have scored <laughs> Come on, exactly no. the same. No need for that. <laughs> <laughs> they, both have scored, they both have scored exactly the same. Yeah, you know? no. That... So, so like, it's very, very, going to be a very, very tight game overall. Yeah, I suppose with with that lads, we'll we'll start pushing for for predictions. Um, from my it, side, is there, before was, you go uh, to predictions, is there any reason yeah. why it's in Athenry or was it ever going to be in Pierce Stadium or the football is not in Pierce Stadium? Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a there's another fella from Angus's club now as well. That's damn glad it's not in Pierce Stadium because uh, he was spotted. What, what was the saying? The crowd said they've, this is the first time they've ever seen a man jumping out of a stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, w- I won't mention his name, but he does play a bit in goals now and again. <laughs> oh. I think yeah, they had well, to turn they... on the lights from there one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, to be fair, the fact that we can get you can get the 200 supporters in, certainly Athenry is the place to play in that... 
in what you're creating. Yeah. You're going to create the best final you can by playing it in Athenry right, rather than the stadium because you know those two hundred, you're 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 kind of you're swamped in many respects in, in Pierce Stadium. Whereas in Athenry, you can still create a, a really enjoyable enjoyable atmosphere that led to it for I suppose everyone in the crowd and for the for the players in the field as well. You know. Yeah, I could be wrong now, but I'm led to believe this evening that we'll be on level three in Galway yeah, on Friday at midnight. So does that rule out the two hundred? Yeah, yeah. I could do. I'm not sure how how, how it works. Is it, does it, yeah? I think so. Yeah, I think it yeah. would. Yeah, it'd be, be a very strange enough. county final well, for this. Hopefully, yes. hopefully not. Like you know, geez, it'd be a disaster. Like you know, after letting them in the last couple of times. But you look at yeah. the second three days, could they survive under? I don't know. To be to be, to be nice, wouldn't it? Play it down the clatter. Play it down the clatter, and we get about five hundred at it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, Chunky, you're, you're, you're the last man to speak, so we'll, we'll get your prediction off you first. Who, who do you reckon first? I know you forced me into uh, picking a team the last time, but I, I genuinely think works, this yeah. could be a draw. I think it could be a draw, and I, I, I'm not I'm not bound down to you this time. No, I'm sticking with a draw this time. <laughs> <laughs> and after, oh, af, no, after extra time, it's oh, really, I, can't, I can't pick it. I'm going to say a draw, to be honest, but the one thing I'll say is fair play to Thomas is by the sounds of it, they haven't looked for an extra week or anything. And the truth being told, to me, I think they kind of deserve it. But it is what it is. I, ho- I hope both teams perform. I'm going to say a draw. And hopefully John Lee doesn't back it. <laughs> <laughs> David? Um, I just, I'd, I'd probably be least at home if I, <laughs> if I, if I don't go for Thomas's put. I, I, just, I just was, I just think... In terms of scope for improvement, and um, I just think Thomas has probably have a small bit more scope for improvement than Turlock. I think Turlock are close to playing to their potential this year, whereas Thomas has haven't really hit the you know shot the lights out overall. Like they've kind of just done enough every game, and maybe maybe this weekend we could maybe see them you know fully max out their potential. And for that reason, I'm probably just going to go uh, Thomas's. But you could flip a coin at it. But truth be told, I, it's very very hard to call. I. Like no results would be a shock, be it, be it a win for Turlock, be it a win for Thomas, be it a draw, or be it decided by penalties or extra time. No result, but narrow, yeah. narrow, narrow prediction for Thomas's. Yeah, and yourself, Angus. Well, it, 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 it is a very, very difficult game to call. I mean, it's 35 years since Turlock Moore won a county title, which is scandalous, really, for a club of their size. You know, I'm sure they'd admit it themselves yeah. and all the underage success but Sunday is promised wet I think from the reports at the moment and I think bringing it to Athenry is just slightly tipping me in St Thomas's favour but again it's going to be a very very close game I mean when you're playing St Thomas's you have to bring physicality intensity both on and off the field and the fact that it's in Athenry You'll have TJ Ryan up and down the line. You know, they'll be in and out, <laughs> in your faces. They contest everything. They give out to lines and then umpires, the whole lot. So for that, just that reason, I'm given a very, very slender advantage to St. Thomas's. But it will be very close. Yeah. Me on. For, for me, I'm going to book the trend slightly and I, I'm actually, I'm going, I'm going to give Turlock the, the tentative nod from, from this side. Just purely based on, I think, if they're going to do it, why shouldn't it be this year? And that it's set up for them in that they've got the, the weak advantage. It's worth an awful lot to them. They're coming into it in form, having beaten a lot of good teams along the way. No injury troubles, to the best of my knowledge, unless something has popped up and since, since the last day, you know. And as I say, confidence is high with them. They're hurling well. And, you know, I just, yeah, I just think if they're going to do it, that this, this year has, has, has to be the year for them. And they have, the advantages are there for them. It's up to them to, to, to make them count. But you know these these games can take on a life of their own. And the one thing we're 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 fairly we're fairly all fairly sure on it's going it's going to be nothing in it come come the last few minutes and we'll see. You know, please God, our our ref doesn't have a big say in the last couple minutes anyhow. Who, that, that, that who is refereeing? Yeah, Alan Kelly. Uh, Alan Kelly. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. The fo- former yeah. ref of the week here. Right? <laughs> come here. <laughs> Just, just David, you made a very valid point there about uh, Thomas. Is like they, they probably haven't maxed out their potential this year, so that is one thing you'd have to say. Thomas has played to their potential, 
they're going to be fierce hard to beat, to be fair now. That they definitely they're winning games there and you're just looking at them, they're playing for like even Connor Cooney's playing mighty for 10, 15 minutes, Shane Cooney's getting 20 minutes, brilliant. But they, they, they haven't maxed out a full performance yet this year, so be interesting to see if they can do it Sunday. Yeah, yeah, and with that, lads, we'll we'll we'll, we'll finish up. We've uh, well, we're only we're only four or five days out now, and we're all all really looking forward to it. And we'll, we'll be back next week to to review it and to look ahead to the intermediate community final, of course, which takes place the week after next. So another big one to look forward to then. So hope you all enjoy the game. Thanks a million to James in particular for coming on this week, and to David and, and Chunky as usual. And sure, we'll 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 see you all again next week. Thanks a million. Cheers, lads. Thanks.